today we are traveling up and down this island, this fabulous island in which we live. See? And we are doing the Whitby Working Artist Summer Open Studio Tour. It is today and tomorrow, and there's all these artists that are opening up their studios for people to come in and view their art and have a chat and all that other stuff. Now, today, a long time has it been a little bit of rain, and now today is the day that it decides to rain. But that's good because that also means that the air quality is so much better and people can actually breathe. So we are starting off with, I believe we're going to Sharon's Glass, Glassworks. Let me look her up. We decided, what number was that? 49. 49? 49, looking up the 49. There, no, I'm gonna get there. It's one-handed business. One -handed, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, 48. She's on Cultus Bay Road. Cultus Bay. This is Miss Sharon's work. Right here, Sharon Anderson Studio Glass. Pretty neat. Excited to see this. Come to Sharon's Glass Work Studio. That is Sharon there in the purple. She's awesome. And she makes some fabulous glass art. Beautiful fusions. It's gorgeous stuff. Look at this. It's amazing. Sharon, smile. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't have a good one. Where does he go for his stuff? It's gorgeous. We're new here, so. But if you could, mm -hmm. give me some contact information, name, phone. Thank you. <laughs> you mean that one? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Kathleen Seacrest Studio. It's her cute little cottage in there where she does some of her work. And these are some of her uh, studio tour specials that she has out today. Absolutely lovely. And we got one for our little cottage. Super excited. The air has already made his way back over there because it started to rain. So we will go. But isn't this beautiful? Just beautiful. <clears throat> There's Kathleen. <laughs> Number 43, Danette Soulgrove, Fiber Arts. We had the pleasure of meeting this gal, gosh, last week, mm -hmm. right? At an open gallery. And so I'm excited to see her her office space, her studio space, and, um, and visit with her again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I can. Okay. I'm not really shy of what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So every time, if you watch the computer over here, you can see that it's actually progressing. Every time that goes down, it changes because it knows. And it's really... <laughs> what? And that's connected to... So it's talking to the loom. So this is what's considered a loom assisted or computer assisted loom. So it's a little different than the loom I have in the gallery. That's more of a basic standard loom. Um, 
Um, these are not inexpensive looms. Uh, this is actually a reconditioned loom that I bought from a, a manufacturer in Chico, California. If I bought this brand new, it would have been $18,000. No. These are not expensive. I assume that does not necessarily come with this. That is with this. It doesn't have oh, the laptop, is. so I had to buy a laptop because mm -hmm. I use Apple and it didn't yeah, work well with Apple. Mm -hmm. um, but I was actually, because this was a 20 year old room and I bought this a couple of years ago, I was able to buy this for about five to $6,000. So it made it much more reasonable mm -hmm. than buying brand new. And this particular loom manufacturer, unlike many of the other loom manufacturers, will buy back looms and they recondition them. So when you buy a mm -hmm. used loom, you know it's going to be in good shape. Right. You know? mm -hmm. so that, and that's, that's a really big thing because if you go out and see mm -hmm. a loom for sale, you don't always know what you're getting. Yeah. You know, it can be really a gamble. Um, so it's a nice way to do something that was a little more affordable. I mean, I still thought it was pretty expensive, but very supportive of my habit. So I'm just happy to... <laughs> I'm noticing when you beat the, uh, Are you noticing that I'm doing? I'm lifting the shed no, and then going forward. I, I was looking at the kind of tension, if any, that you put on the on the thread that's going through. So I don't put a whole lot of tension on there. Um, what I am trying to do is that at least it's snug, and I've got a couple spots that aren't on solid because what I'm looking for is a good. Straight, straight edge. edge. And sometimes you're not going to get that based on the pattern because sometimes, depending on where you've ended, the pattern it's going to pull in. So I try to let it do what it's naturally going to do. Um, so we'll advance up a little bit. You start to see some more color. This is the magic for me. As you start to, you know, you never know yeah. what's That's coming next. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that one. Three. Here. No, on this side. Oh, and it just sort of sits oh in this the is called a floating uh, selvage. Oh, okay. And so if you look at the front there, I actually have weights. Oh, oh and they no. help, help that because it's it's the farthest edge piece. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is weight them, and then it actually holds that, and it makes it a little bit easier to do the um, a good selvage. Mm -hmm. It's one of the many tricks that I've picked up. Oh, believe me, there are a lot of tricks. I am so excited to see Mark Fessler and Barbara Kohler. I, I cannot believe you guys made it down here. Next up on the tour, number 39, James Tennyson. Um, look at that beautiful raven and cr or crow. I think it's actually a crow because I don't see the bump on the beak. But isn't that beautiful? Uh, he is a painter dealing in oils and watercolors. I didn't know those two things went together, and so I'm excited to learn. And this right here looks like Santa Barbara to me, where I grew up, so I'm excited to see some of his work.